And now, suspense. Why you're so hot and bothered about seeing this stuff, I don't know. Because I'm taking a course in abnormal sight, that's why. Oh, fool. Art, are we going to quarrel? Let's go get those clams and make up, huh? Hey. We're still in love, aren't we? Take it easy. Still married, aren't we? We're going to be. <laughs> All right. Come on, then it's clams and beer, cold. Okay. A rifle snake killing of Mary James, whose husband strapped her to the kitchen table, and then tied her in the cage of rattlesnakes for 24 hours while he read. Look, honey, we don't want to see that stuff. Dr. Violet, Dr. Violet, let's on the Cleveland Court of Murder. Dr. Violet explains the white-eyed boy murder of Boston. Oh, for Pete's sake, Lois, let's get out of here. Now, look, Lois. I'm going to talk to Spot. If you don't come with me, then I'll go along. I mean it. Meet you in the clam place in half an hour. Yes, thank you, Miss. Thank you. Doctor Violet, let the mouth begin. One ticket, please. One ticket, there you are. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. In these amazing displays, every item is authenticated. You just follow me. Next, we have one of the most horrifying killers in the annals of criminology. Dr. Wortham has called him a polymorph perverse adult. This man indulged in such heinous crimes against humanity... Excuse me, please. May I ask a question? No question. That I find it uh, beyond my taste to describe them to you. Here he is, Albert Fish, a house painter. It's estimated that Fish attacked 100 persons, killing at least 15 of them. And during all that time, he was well known to the authorities. He had been in and out of asylums and jails for years. Yet while he was in those institutions, no one ever bothered to deal with him in anything other than 
a routine and perfunctory manner. After the killing of nine-year-old Grace Budd, Fish lived for six years in the same neighborhood and wearing the same suit of clothes that he had on at the time of her murder. Oh. Now, before I conclude my lecture, I have a personal appeal which I always make to my audiences. I beg you to remember this. For all the crimes you have seen recommitted this afternoon, you are in part responsible. Well, how do you figure that one out? My dear sir, no man is born a murderer or a criminal. He is made criminal by us. By his mother, perhaps, who married a man she didn't love and was divorced. By a harsh school teacher who thought that the boy should be taught a lesson. By that slum he grew up in, or by that year he couldn't find work. Or by a whole succession of petty tyrannies and indecencies, which we are all guilty of, one to the other in this difficult daily round that makes up our lives. Yes, thank you. That's all. Don't you hey, 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 doctor, hey, doctor, uh, what about the uh, next one there? Uh, ain't you going to tell us about him, huh? Clarence Trevor? Yeah, yeah, the one over there that's dark. I uh, don't include Trevor in my lectures because his case parallels the one I've just discussed, oh. except on one count. Oh, what's that? What's what? Well, what's the one count? Clarence Trevor, also a sadomasochist and a psychotic with a strong mother fixation, chose as his victims, not children, but young women about to be married, whom he hoped to save from what he considered the corruptions of the flesh. Well, Doc, you mean, you mean he still does? I use the present tense to indicate that Trevor is still at liberty. Oh, no. Chuck, 60% of the murderers in this country go undiscovered. Oh, Doc, I can oh, hardly I believe you. that. Can the detectives, can't the police do something about it? My dear young lady, many detectives and police are stupid and or corrupt. Oh, no. Why? Oh, because you permit it. Many chiefs of police and district attorneys and judges and lawyers and the directors of our state institutions are themselves, in God's truth, criminally liable because they function only in terms of their own careers. Oh, Why? Because you permit it. And you, and you, and you, and you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, oh that's well, that doesn't seem to make sense. <laughs> You ever seen that mousy fellow around here before? What fellow? The one with the dark glasses. Oh, him. Yes, he comes every day and asks me when I'm going to lecture on Trevor. How long has that been going on? Oh, for about a week, I should say. Since the day of the murder. You see, you see the cops hushed it up. Yeah. She was a nobody, so nobody cared. So they couldn't find the murderer. So they hushed it up. Is that a fact? I work for a beach concession here. And I come in here every day to rest my eyes from the glare. Well, that must cost you a lot of money. No, no, no. I found the back way in. Oh. Sneaked in, so I don't have to be. <laughs> Copper. The reason that the Trevor display is dark, that one there, is because that's where the girl was murdered. You mean right in that display? Right smack in it. Oh. Oh. Uh, you dropped your glasses. Here they are. They didn't find the girl's body for five days. And the reason was that everybody thought that the dead girl was a wax figure. You mean they left a real body in there and placed the wax one? Changed the clothes and everything. Well, I'll Nobody see. saw it for five days. Mm. Yeah, but what now, happened? Now, Father, this, we've got enough of this. You oh, well, I'd like to hear the rest of your mouth. Oh. There seems to know quite a bit. Yeah. Go sit on his tail, but close. Wherever he goes, stay right with him. Right, Inspector. Johnny, yeah. put the padlock on. Is the chief? That is straight from downtown. Padlock him now. Presto. What? What was that? Oh. Too bad we've got to close you up, Doc. Oh. Well, actually, I'm rather relieved to you out front. Right. You see, the chief figures Trevor himself did this oh. job. Does? Yeah. We think that while you were lecturing to the crowd about Trevor, he was standing there listening to you. Can that be possible? Your lecture gets him going like a hot rod. Hits the girl in one of these dark corners, takes her up till closing time, then he's got the whole night to spend with her. Perhaps. Trevor was never a man to be rushed. 
He likes a broad margin for his refinement. Well, I wouldn't worry, Doc. You'll be open in a week. And when this hits the papers, ha, you'll make a fortune here. Uh, I hope so. This is what you're like. I'm glad I found out now. Well, I certainly found out what you're like. Well, I gave in to you, didn't I? Said you wanted to come here, and we came. Yeah, for two minutes when the lecture was all over. Well, it was enough for me. Well, I'm going to wait and hear the next lecture, and I'm going to hear it all the way through. Suit yourself. Might as well get our money's worth. Only don't expect me to be waiting at the clam bar. He's a charming, sweet old man. Now, look, Lois, I'm going to take the next bus right back to the base. That's right, that's right. He'll teach me a lot more than college ever could. Well... If you feel like sending me a letter there, you can. Well, you're wrong. You're pig-headed and wrong. But, uh... Art? Your fiancé has left you? Yes. Oh, sorry. What time is the next lecture start? I want to hear it, and then I'll catch up with him. Well, I'll be glad to begin right now. Come, my dear, we'll start with Chinatown. Chinatown is the name given to that section of the cities of San Francisco and New York, where there is not only a large Chinese population, but also, a, oh, do sit down. Unfortunately, an incidence of disease and but poverty. Look, look, I'm all alone. Couldn't you wait for more people? If I had to wait, I'd, I'd rush, and then I wouldn't have a broad margin. I do sit down. On second thought, perhaps you're right. Will you excuse me while I see if I have any other listeners? Second act of Dr. Violet. No, no, please don't. Yeah, this girl needs carrying on like this lady. That can't last long. But you have no idea how this may affect my husband. Now, come on now, call him out, will you? I gotta get this place locked up. He needs to give his lectures. He'll get sick of these other things. Wait, breaking my heart. We've been here five years, everything peaceful. Come on, now stop falling, will you? Oh, just because of one accident, oh, officer, please, I beg you. You're too big to fall. <laughs> Is everybody out from in there? Yes, sir, everybody's out. All right, we'll just click it close. Uh-uh. It's on me. Compliments to Los Angeles. Greatest little police force this side of heaven. Hey, uh, chin up, huh? Suppose we might as well take them down now. What will you do now? Take it to the Lord. Whenever my beloved mother was sore perplexed, she always went to Angela's temple. So shall I. What time will you be back? Oh, an hour in, an hour out. Back for dinner then? Oh, yes. I've ordered clams. You always like clams, so... Goodbye, dear. See you at six. Clarence! Oh, come home with me now, sweetie. I'll, I'll hold you tight. Sweetie, I'm all right. <laughs> don't... Don't you think maybe you should go back to Tamaria for a while? No. Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm all right. I've been all right for five years. Except for last week, and that'll never, not again. That, that'll ne never hey, happen. Hey, what is this? You're locked up already, but it's bright noon. That's right. Well, uh, did you happen to see which way my girl went? Didn't she come out with you? Did you see her, Doctor? Two minutes ago, I saw her. You did? Where? Across the street. She took a cab. Oh, no, I've gone that cook, this. 
You could have a nice, nice rest in the hospital there. Don't you think that sailor had sly, dirty eyes? And then, as soon as they let us open up here again... My cheeks feel so hot. Then you could come back and give your wonderful lectures again. Sweetie. Please. For me. For Mama. I think you're right. Oh, good. Good, 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 good. I'll put in the call right now. We'll take the bus right after dinner. Violet, let's go to Camarillo right now. But sweetie, I have to make a call. Mama, take, Mama, take me to the bus right now. But you'll be all right. You'll go straight to the temple and then you'll come straight home. And anyway, if we're going to Camarilla, I have to get my hair done. Those doctors think I'm the most wonderful wife in the world. Can't look messy, can I? All right, sweetie. Yes. Say yes, like a good boy. I'll take a cab both ways. See you at six. <laughs> That's for an emergency. Oh, but this is an emergency. My dear young lady, if you become fearful, I'll gladly show you the way out. But you were going so long, and there wasn't a soul around, so I... Oh, Dr. Violet, I'm so relieved and so glad to see another human being. I don't suppose you want me to continue with my lecture now, do you? Not now, please. please show me the way out. Of course. Of course, my dear. But I'll certainly come back again and hear your lecture. Maybe this July. I'm going to graduate in June, then marry my son. We could stop here on our honeymoon. Oh, because I really want to hear your lecture, Dr. Violet. I think you're brilliant. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to turn the light on in the next display. I thought you might like to see Clarence Trevor. Actually, this is a brand new display. I opened it only last week. I lectured only once on Trevor and... Then we had an accident. What happened? Something went wrong with the mechanism. How did this one move? Did she get her head cut off, too? Oh, no. Trevor never decapitates, and I'll explain why. Trevor's father was an extremely forceful man. He started life in a steel mill, and after 19 years, he had worked his way up to the president. Oh, yeah. Father was also extremely unfaithful. This turned the gentle mother into a recluse. 
She spent hours in spiritual meditation and in self-discipline. Dr. Bob, of course, I really must be... She took her son with her. Night after night, she read to the little chap from the lives of the saints uh, and the please martyrs. Please tell me the way out. I... The book was beautifully illustrated. Joan's Ark burned at the stake. The witches hanged at Salem, a crusader impaled by a Turk. But of all the martyrs, the one that impressed the little boy most was Sebastian. I must go. I'll let you out in just a minute. Lois, do you remember Sebastian? Do you remember how he was roped to a tree and pierced to death with arrows? Do you, Lois? Do you, dear? In your eyes. Of course, later he began to hate his mother. Stop, Clarence, Trevor! Of course. Clarence, Clarence, didn't cry. I want you to cry. Blessed are the pure, for they shall see the kingdom. You don't mind my snooping around, but I've lost my sunglasses and I Anything can't... that's lost in the sound, found in the ticket booth. Oh, I... Hey, I, I see you've been working on the new display. That's all right. That looks almost real. Your glasses will be in the ticket booth. Hey, hey, look at her move. Say, that's the best you've ever done. And listen to that. You even got a phonograph rigged up. I said your glasses were in the ticket all booth. All right, Doc, take it easy. Let's oh. see how this thing is rigged up. To... sins of the world. I will protect you. I will save you. How do you like that? I never figured it was the duck. I was hanging around here like you told me, and I seen a beachcomber duck through the back way, so I'm sure it was him. But it wasn't. I never figured the duck. Well, goes to show. Next week, our story of suspense will be The Cask of Amontillado by Edgar Allan Poe, starring Bella Lugosi. Be sure to listen to Suspense each Thursday night on the radio. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.